Okay, Foundations of Math 20 lesson is 8.5 today. We're taking a look at similar objects, scale models, and scale diagrams. So the difference here is we're talking about objects now. Okay, so uh, last day we talked about two-dimensional diagrams. We talked about areas and stuff like that, how the scale factor relates to dimensions of those diagrams, how the scale factor relates to the areas of those um, two-dimensional diagrams. So in this section we're talking about three-dimensional objects. Okay, 8.5. So let's just, first of all, let's just take a look at the definition here of similar objects. Okay, so you might want to write into your notes here. Similar objects, two or more three-dimensional objects that have proportional dimensions. So there's a couple things that we'll unpack here. Uh, similar, okay, so similar objects have proportional dimensions. So if we're taking a look at, let's say, a cube here, okay? And we got a larger cube over here. Again, still a cube. That's supposed to be a cube. Okay? And let's say we have a side length here of 3 by 3 by 3. It's a cube, so they're all the same. Right? And over here we have 9 and 9 and 9. And so these two objects, they're three-dimensional, okay, they're cubes, they're objects, and they are similar because they have the exact same shape. So similar means the exact same shape, but different sizes, okay? Same shape, different, different size. We talked about that before, similar. Now you can confirm this by taking a look at what we call corresponding dimensions. So all of the dimensions, the corresponding ones for sure, so uh, in a cube you could take a look at the length of the, the base here and the length of the base here. And when we're taking a look at a scale factor, okay, do we put the diagram measurements on top or do we put the actual measurements on top? You remember? To find the scale factor, let's say this is the original and this is the, uh, this is the model or the representation. Do you remember what we do? Model. Model? <coughs> you may agree with that? Okay. So you put the model or the scale part, the drawing, on top, and then the actual is on the bottom. Okay? And so the scale factor is 9 over 3, or is a scale factor of 3. All right? Now, this is a cube, so all the dimensions are equal. But if this wasn't a cube, so let's say we don't have these markings. I can't erase all of them, I don't think, without tearing apart the thing. But let's say that we have... This is uh, 4 over here. Okay? If these were similar and the scale factor was 3, what should this length then be? What is it? Go ahead and shout it out. 12. Okay, 12. Yes, it's 12 because 3 times 3 is 9. So if these are similar objects, that means all corresponding uh, dimensions must be proportional. So you, that means you multiply them by the same factor. So this one should be 12. And if this one was 2, let's say, then this one would be 6. Okay? So similar, same shape, different size. <coughs> and I'll put different size in brackets. It could be a 1 to 1 ratio, I guess. Scale factor could be 1. I don't know how interesting that would be. But usually it's different size. Usually we're doing some kind of scaling because we want to make a small uh, actual object, you know, bigger in a dimension. Or like in the case of your... Your, um, your scale drawing from your bedroom assignment. We're taking your big bedroom and we're shrinking it down. We're reducing it down to, uh, to a diagram there. So now we're talking about 3D objects. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, so remember, all corresponding dimensions. So let's take a look back at the text here. And let's go, let's take a look at example one, which the computer seems to be misbehaving. I've got no images. Where are they? Okay. Oh, just the page I need. Isn't that uh, handy? Well, let's see. Let me reduce. See if that helps. It does not help. Okay. All right. So, example one says 
You can read along in your textbook, and I'll try and get it up here while I read here. It says, Sandeep is a chef. In his restaurant, he uses frying pans of various sizes. Are his frying pans similar? Oops, this is 8.4. Let's do 8.5. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Okay, finally. Are his frying pans similar? So there's a picture of his frying pans. One looks a little bit larger than the other. And what he's done, again, to check all these is just check corresponding dimensions. So the bottom diameter of the large pan, doesn't matter which one he takes first because which one's the original, which one's not, doesn't matter. Just take the same one on top, the same one on bottom. So the bottom diameter of the large pan, all the way across the larger one, 30 centimeters, the bottom diameter is 20. So as a scale factor, it looks like it's 3 over 2. You can see that he checked all the other dimensions too, the corresponding dimensions, the depth on both and the handle length on both. And he came up with the same number for each corresponding dimension. That means they are similar. Okay? The factor is 1.5. All right. Example 2 we'll go over here. Um, if you're given a, this, in this case, um, Esmeralda bought his, this toy tractor to give to her youngest brother for his birthday. The dimensions of the toy tractor are given. Uh, the scale ratio on the package says it's a 1 to 16 scale ratio, or scale factor. She knows that her brother will want to know the size of the real tractor. So it is as simple as this. Um, the scale factor is 1 over 16. So that means the model, or the representation, is 1. The real one would be 16 times as much. Okay. So basically you look at each dimension, and you would multiply by a factor of 16. Not 1 over 16, because remember, we want to make it bigger, right? So we're going to multiply by 16 over 1, really, to get to the um, original object. So a couple things to note here. You take uh, each measurement, multiply it by 16, and that's going to be, obviously, in the same units. And I'm going to ask you in some of these questions, just like they did, to convert those to meters. So you just have to remember that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. There are a thousand meters in a kilometer. What else do you need to know? I don't know. Those are the those are the typical ones that you'll run into, I guess. Any questions so far? It's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip right to the uh, in summary. So let's just talk about that a little bit. I'm gonna give you kind of one more example here to clarify this. So again, if we're taking a look at this section on its own. Um, 3D objects, right? Three-dimensional objects are what we're talking about. And all of the corresponding dimensions must be proportional. So multiplied by the same scale factor. The scale factor is the ratio of a linear measurement. So remember, not area, not volume. We're going to talk about that volume next section. But it's all the linear dimensions, okay? The length, the width, the height, the depth, so on and they are expressed in the same units as well. Okay. To create a scale model, determine an appropriate scale to use based on the dimensions of the original object and the size of the model of the diagram required. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take this, uh, this piece out and I want to show you an example here. Okay. <coughs> okay, so as you know, you have an assignment that's due here coming up, and um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do a scale model of your bedroom, right? We've talked about this a little bit. So this is the, this is the guest room in, in, uh, in my house here. So we have bed here, and there's the dresser here, and there's the desk here. And then there's the door right here, and the closet would be about there. Okay? So that's, a, that's a, just a general sort of layout of the bedroom. And... You might be, I don't know where you're at in this process, but choosing a scale is something that we haven't addressed yet. So how do you choose a scale? So I'm just going to run over a little, uh, just a quick example here. To create a scale model or a diagram, determine an appropriate scale. So this is the example that I wrote out for this little bedroom here. So let's say that the length here of this bedroom is 11 feet. Okay? It's 11 feet. And you have a you have a piece of paper 
right, in your notebook, the three holes here, right, and you're going to draw a scale diagram. And let's just say that the whole bedroom, you want to be about this long, and this is what I did, I took a quick measurement, and I want this bedroom that's 11 feet to be 22 centimeters, okay? So I'm going to take the actual length of 11 feet and I'm going to compress that into a diagram that's an overall length of 22 centimeters. So the scale, remember the scale can be written uh, with two different units. And so the scale is going to be the diagram to the original, right? Um, and so it's going to be uh, 22, the diagram, centimeters to 11 feet. And you can have them in different units, all right? 22 centimeters will be 11 feet in my diagram. So to find out uh, what the scale actually is, we're going to do high school office. So um, 22 centimeters is going to be to 11 feet. So what we do is we want to get these into the same units to find the scale factor. So the scale factor, and again, we've determined an appropriate sort of scale here, but what's the scale factor? What you're going to do is you're going to use the same units. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 11 feet into centimeters. And using our uh, unit analysis, 11 feet, uh, if you multiply that by 12 inches per one foot, that gets rid of feet. And I want to get rid of inches into centimeters. And so I'm going to put inches down here, centimeters up there. That's going to get rid of that and there are 2.5 centimeters in one inch. So that's going to be 11 times 12 times 2.5, and I did this somewhere on your calculator, and so that's going to give us 22 centimeters relates to 330 centimeters, if uh, what I did there earlier was correct. And so if we uh, reduce that, uh, do that division, you get one over 0 0.067 as a scale factor, or 1 to 0 0.067. Or you can write this as 6.7%. Okay, so of the real thing, the diagram is going to be 6.7%. So that's going to be your scale factor. So for every dimension, for every dimension, you multiply it by this, this number. Okay, and um, Again, if you measure your bed in inches or in centimeters, multiply it by that number, and then we're good. Question? Why can't you just say two centimeters equals one foot? Um, well, you, okay, so the question was why, why can't you do two centimeters equals one foot? You can for a scale. Two centimeters is to one foot. You can use that as a scale, but the scale factor is not two to one. So this is the scale, and that's fine to express it like that. Do you see what I'm saying? Two centimeters to one foot is totally fine. You can write that on your diagram, actually, because there should be a scale in your diagram. Two centimeters is to one foot. But the scale factor, so what I'm saying is this. If you measure your bed, so you have your tape measure, and you measure your bed, and you say that your bed is about oh, 76 inches, maybe, is a typical length for a single bed, and that's 193 centimeters. So if you've got 193 centimeters, you want 6.7% of that. So 193 centimeters is actual, and so uh, times 0 0.067. If you do that on your calculator, that should give you the, the length uh, for, your, for your bed in centimeters. So let me just, let's just check that out, see if it's reasonable. Okay, so 193 times 0 0.067, 12.9. Uh, centimeters. So if the whole bedroom is 22 and it looks like you know this is your bed here, so 12, which is a little over a little over half of that, is going to be the length of your bed. That seems reasonable. Okay. So scale factor, you have to have everything to the same units. Reduce it down to kind of a one, two, something like that. So have a number that you can multiply by. And yeah, the question was scale factor. You don't have to leave it like this. You can reduce that. It's no problem. Okay. So that's scale versus scale factor. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, so multiply any linear measurement of the object by the scale factor to calculate the measure 
uh, of the other object, and that other object could be the, the model. Um, let's see, this one, this one here down here, these two points down here I wanted to mention. If the scale factor is between 0 and 1, that means the new object, in this case our, our scale diagram from last um, section, or the representation, the model of the object, Okay, if it's between 0 and 1, we have a reduction of the original. And if it's greater than 1, we have an enlargement. Okay. All right, any, any questions there? Okay, so I'll give you your, uh, your assignment here.